I'm Brian Ripley with TPG Ranch Properties and we are in downtown Steamboat Springs at the Romick Rodeo Arena and we're here at the 2023 Route County Cattlemen's Classic Stock Dog Trial and we're gonna witness some competitors from all over the Western United States as they bring their dogs to compete in a trial where they work cattle through a series of obstacles to exhibit their control and cattle handling skills. So join us. Easy now, easy now. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna push the stock up and practice a couple of obstacles. So these dogs, I was, I was saying before that they're uh, on the high end of the intensity scale. And if they don't work every day, uh, you have to have a good reason because it usually has consequences. They, are, they start to misbehave and they're, they're, this is their life. We, we, walk, walk up, walk up. So you're listening to me speak the traditional Scottish sheepdog vocabulary. That's the vocabulary that we use with these dogs. And nearly everyone in our community in the, you know, that's competing in trials uses the same kind of vocabulary. So I will have, use about five commands today and uh, they will be for mainly flanking the cattle, what we say a way to me to go clock, counterclockwise around the cattle, come by means go clockwise around the cattle. Our stop and listen is lie down. We don't use sit very much. If these dogs sit, it's basically an accident. So they're, in their obedience, we never even really teach that. We just teach lie down. We like that because it takes the pressure off the stock a little bit better. And then we use the command to go right straight on line to the stock. We say, walk up. And then the last command uh, is, you're done. We're done working. Stop working and return to me. And that's, that'll do. You've probably heard me say that a hundred times already. So, so those are the five commands. Lie down, walk up, away to me, come by me, and that'll do. The, our, all dogs have the same lie down, walk up, and that'll do. And the lie down is just one short and I kind of bite it off. Walk up, go straight to the stock is too short. That'll do is just like your mom used to use. That'll do. Then this dog has an away to me, which is two, and it's the same as the young dog. I'll give it to you right now. Tate, there, and you just go counterclockwise. And then his clockwise, is just the opposite. Go clockwise. <whistles> Lie down, you. Okay, we'll just bring them down to this next stretch. And then they'll be on our end. Good job, buddy.
As we watch these dogs compete, we're gonna hear the handlers call out signals and signs that dictate where the dog moves in relationship to the cattle. So there's a partnership going on between the handler and the dog itself to, to get the desired end result, to have that herd of cattle um, move, stop, turn, and change direction. And, and all this is time, so it's a contest to see who can do things the fastest. I'm here with Angie Johnson. She's from New Mexico. She's a competitor and dog handler that's brought a few dogs to the trials today. So uh, Angie, tell us like kind of what your background is, how long you've been competing and what it means to you to like come to this event. Okay, so um, I'm actually originally from Eastern Oregon my okay. whole life and my husband and I and our kids have been doing Border Collies for about 15, 16 years. Okay. Um, we've had them longer than that, but as far as registered dogs that we were really putting time into our program, uh, about 16 years. Uh, but until about three years ago, I didn't have the time to go and trial because I was busy homeschooling my kids. Okay. And um, so we mostly would go to maybe a couple trials a year, and most of those were just local. Uh, when my youngest graduated from high school, I felt like I had finally the time to go and do some of this. And my husband had two nice dogs that he had trained and I had a dog that was pretty good. And so he said, here, take both of them, mine, and you take yours and go, just I'll haul you and you can compete. And so I did that and did really well and started getting better and better. And um, I went to my first national finals in Afton oh, wow. and had so much fun that, I mean, I was really had the bug then. Sure. And I talked my husband into getting back into it as well. And so the next year, um, we did quite well that year. My dog got dog of the year for, uh, Mike got dog of the year for sheep and cattle for intermediate, um, both. And um, that bumped me into the open, which I'm in now. So right. I'm just trying to sink or swim right now with, sure. with my dogs. But um, I've never been to Steamboat. I love it. It's gorgeous here. I feel very much at home because I'm from the mountains of Eastern Oregon. So I'm um, really enjoying this day with my Great. dogs. Well. So. It's fun watching everybody. I've noticed like there's quite a bit of camaraderie, you know, yes. it's not, it's not so competitive at dead. Mm -hmm. People seem very supportive. Can you talk about kind of the atmosphere yeah. amongst all the, we find that everywhere we go, everybody is cheering for each other, happy for each other. Um, it's really not at, um, against each other. It's kind of managing the cattle, you know, trying to look for a good, um, stockmanship in, good handling and whatnot and so you're always happy to see somebody turn in a really good run like what goes into training at home that gets the dogs ready for a trial right uh typically we will start our dogs we'll start exposing them to stock at four months or so just occasionally okay. at six months maybe you know more like once every week or two and then we you just kind of gauge we gauge where they're at and start them in like daily training more like 10 months of age maybe 10 to 12 and we always start with sheep we typically don't move our dogs to cattle until their growth plates are closed okay. So that's um, sometime after 12 months of age and because um, we don't want them to get a break um, across the growth plate. Sure. So we just wait. We're pretty patient with dogs that way. So, but it takes, uh, it depends on the dog. Some of them train up fast. Some of them don't, you know, sure. um, but usually you're looking at uh, several months, two, three months to get a dog that really knows their sides and their stop. And, and then the, the degree to which they're confident and obedient varies so much from dog to dog. That's where you really get, you don't know until you really get into it, what a dog's going to offer. And then there's the other variable, which is they change over time. Like sure. I, we've seen dogs that have really come into their strength and their power at like four years of age or even five to where they, they really have a lot more power Get some um, confidence mm -hmm. behind yeah. them. And, yeah, yeah, I've seen I've seen that many times. So, I'm cautioned not to give up on a dog too early, sure. especially if you're looking at making that decision between 12 and 20 months of age.
Well, I'm here with Joe Frost, and Joe is a contestant from Utah. Thank you for you know joining us and giving us a little bit of background on why you came to Steamboat for this event. Hey, you're welcome. We uh, we got up this morning at 4:30 and left Randallette. We're about three hours from here. Um, Jeff, I we didn't come last year, but a couple of my buddies did, and and they said Jeff put a really good trial on. And uh, I train these cow dogs for a living, and okay. and re breed and raise a bunch of them, and and we run a ranch there in, in Randallette. And so I, I use these dogs in my operation um, to help make my living, but also like to come to trials and, and come show them off a little bit. And so uh, we try to come whenever I can and we had this weekend off. And so we came to, Good. came to try to get a piece of it. Well, thanks. And I think that's an important aspect, right? That these are actual working dogs. Like they do come and compete, but like you said, you, Everything you do on the ranch correlates to what they're doing in the arena. It you does. Expand on yeah, they, you know, like training dogs for, for other people, they always say, well, I don't need him to be trial broke. But the truth is, is, uh, you know, these dogs, you see how, how precise they've got to be. You know, you got to be able to move them two inches or, or now send him 100 yards um, and stop him on a dime. But the, the better broke that dog is, the more he can help you on the ranch and, and the more of an asset he is to you. I, you know, for me, who cares if I screw this up? I, I lost my $80 entry fee. At home, if, if that dog runs a cow through the fence or through a cattle guard or something goes haywire, now you're messing with, the, with my living, you know? And so I, the dog I use on the ranch, I want him broke enough to come do this because, and, and by broke, I mean uh, trained, enough training and, and responsive to me. Um, he's got to be able to think on his own a little bit on the ranch more than here. But also, if I need to put him exactly somewhere, I want to be able to do that. Sure. And so that's what I tell people. Well, how much help do you want? Yep. You just want a little bit of help or you want a <laughs> yeah. bunch of help, yeah. you know? The one dog will replace three or four horse and riders. Sure. Um, it, I do stuff now since I've got into these dogs that used to take four or five people horseback. I go out and do it me and the dog half the time i'm on foot the dog does all the work he can hand, handle a hundred head of mama cows on his own you know and and he may have to get in a fight and then and then clean things up and then back off and and read the cattle it, it's amazing what they're capable right. of doing and their value then right when we're talking about a cattle market a cattle business where margins everything and if you you know, it's hard to find good help, but also pay help. So now you've got this dog that can replace. So yeah, many and 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 he he's always on time to work, and yeah. and and all you got to do is feed him. You don't you don't got to deal with him going to town chasing girls or uh, <laughs> you know not showing up or showing up drunk. He's he's always super excited to go to work. That I mean, that's what they live for. We I've got a couple puppies here that I'm just dragging around. And they're they're four months old. And, and they're eyed up on this stock. Like that's the only, they'd rather do that than eat, sleep, drink, or breathe air. Sure. You know, it's, it's the most important thing to them in the world. And they, they absolutely love it. You can't, you can't make one work. They, they, they either have it or they don't. And, and when they have it, it's, that's all they want to do. They'll, they'll work themselves to death if you allow them to. Sure. Well, it's sure fun to watch the partnership, you know, between the handler and the dog. And um, I appreciate your time and thanks so much and good luck here at the trials. Yes, so thank, thank you. you. I appreciate it.